special guest today, separate bedrooms. He's the owner of Pija Palace, very, very popular, uh, I would say Indian sports bar in LA, top 101 restaurant voted by the LA Times. It's the Indian answer to John and Vinny's. I think it's Honestly. pretty accurate. Honestly, that's a Honestly. fucking yeah. very, very accurate. And yeah. as someone that lives, literally, you could, you could, you could spit on my apartment from where Pizza Palace is. <laughs> I think I might have been the first person in there that wasn't just like invited uh, when you guys had to roll out. Yeah, I just rolled up too. Yo, you I and got I my both rolled up. Perfect. Like anytime I want to go in there, I yeah. got it. I got it mapped out. I know exactly when to go. <clears throat> and I'm like three for three. Yeah. Every time I walk through the door, just, my favorite spot is just to sit at the bar. Yeah. I don't need the table. I have to say, I was like scrolling TikTok or Instagram. Oh, TikTok's got y'all. And headlock. bro, I kind of hate that though. <laughs> they said this is the hardest reservation in LA right now. It's not. It was like one of two, one of two or three other spots. Yeah, you're about to blow up the good times to go. No, because <laughs> everybody's going with other people. GM of each. No, I, I like to go, even on a restaurant that's popping like Pizza Palace, there's a lot of hype around it. I want them to go just on the humble. So I got it on Resi. Yeah, I that was crazy. On Resi. Yeah, yeah, we were DMing before this. Yeah. Got it. And I really, I really liked it. Like, uh, I just got to go and see it without you, you know, like, then you get to really experience it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And also the Knicks is one for one for one there. I watched one Knicks game yeah. there. They beat the Celtics. Uh, I, forgot, I, watched, I watched like three or four really good games there. And then, uh, you know, while we're bigging you up, drink wise, that's where you kind of. But I, 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 I got say this. everybody in the headlock with the drinks. The drinks are pretty yeah. perfect. Dude, the our drinks are bomb. The drinks are bomb. Great. Drinks are bomb. I would say this. How do you feel? Because you intended this as a sports bar. You opened it as a sports bar. Yeah. But very few customers are using it as a sports bar. So I'm curious how you feel about the evolution of the restaurant. Obviously, it's it's not ideal. I guess it's not like what I envisioned. But I mean, if if it gets the bills paid, it you know gets the bills paid. Yeah. I, I, no. I, I, it's it's like your food became such a hit that it was almost like some people. You know, studios have said this to me before. Like, yo, it feels like there's two shows in one or two movies and you're trying to make three movies in one. And I feel like with Pizza Palace, it's a champagne problem. You had this concept, yeah. but the food became such a hit that like, you don't even need the sports bar part. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I wish there, you know, people find the TVs annoying. It's, I open the restaurant to watch the sports. Yeah, and I, I love the TVs. Because I got a sports bar next to my apartment. Yeah, yeah but, can you, but Chuck, like you, you can't get in really. No, like you can. But I right. I go places by myself. That's yeah. If you yeah. Try, if you want to eat by yourself, you can go anywhere. I feel like you gotta Fair. keep the bar for like solo it, or it, two tops just to come watch sports and eat. Like, cause then it could be a local bar <laughs> for some. That's what I. That's what I do. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like I'm never when the lines out. Everybody in line is couples, triples, people to try to sit down and you know four together. Mm -hmm. I walk yeah. in and there'll be two people in one spot, two people in one spot, one bar seat. Yeah. I'm there the rest of the night. That's an so anomaly like, though, right? Like how often does that happen? You gotta time it out right. Yeah, you gotta time it out right. Yeah. But my my uh my favorite thing is the one thing people don't talk about is that you got the only spot that got three color wings. Yeah. You get yellow wings, and you get green wings, and you get red wings, and they all slap. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, brother. Look, Toad, where are you from? How'd you get the idea of all that? Uh, do I look at one of these cameras? No. There's bro. seven of them. <laughs> nah, dude, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. He's gonna find you. Yeah. Okay, where? Dope. Uh, how'd I get the idea? Dude, obviously, just growing up in LA, you, you gotta be a big sports fan. Like, yeah. from here, we've always had a team that's doing something, right? Even if it's not like the Dodgers, Lakers, or uh, the Rams now. Like, even, didn't like LAFC just win last year and the Kings? Like, yep. somebody's always filling in the pocket. And like, uh, worked in Indian fine dining for a long time. Oh, where, where? Bro, everywhere. Like fucking Indian accent. Um, <sighs> worked at Rue for a little bit, August 1-5. Like just nice. everybody who had an award, like yeah. I was just chasing it. I just wanted to learn. But like through that process, <laughs> through that process, I learned like, I can't do like Indian food better than these guys. There's like no point in me like even going down that road. Yeah. So instead I just like cook American food through an Indian lens. It's cool and humble you say that though. There's just no way. I mean, 
and you know what people are some sometimes people get offended like they're just like yo dude this needs to be more indian and i'm like bro go to an indian restaurant mm -hmm. yeah you're not doing that you are doing your own thing from an american lens and also this is the thing that i find very interesting about food like there's i i actually have several dishes i will beat your fucking grandma at but you know the thing, if I'm doing a restaurant, what's unique, I think, about my take on Taiwanese food is that I serve it like we're in America, like we're in downtown New York. And then also, like, I'll have ideas like a Cheeto fried chicken bout. Grandma's not doing that, mm -hmm. right? And, like, while that doesn't want to be the thing you lead with when you present your culture, right. I think there's been a couple great generations of Indian restaurants in this country where now it is time for an American Indian person to say, yo... I can, I probably can't smoke these dudes under the table cooking traditional Indian food, but I know how to make pizza and I know how to make wings and I know how like an American person wants to dine and I know how to tell our story in this genre. It's like a director saying, I'm going to make the Western. That's what American cooking in a lot of ways is, the Western. Right. The Samurai film is a Western. The spaghetti western is a western. Yeah. You're doing a western with Indian actors in an Indian story and voice. That's that's how I see it and I find it interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it. I also don't try to define it too much. Like yeah. when it comes in. Yeah, that's what I feel like the beauty of it. And it's yeah. as actually like being such a close proximity, like watching everything yeah. kind of happen. Like if I come if I come home around six or seven on a Wednesday, like I'm not getting a parking spot in front of my crib. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what I think uh, really makes your restaurant the spot it's been is we got to take into account that, like, you know, your traditional American, white, black, whatever, their spice profile isn't thugged out. And if you wanted to go to the traditional Indian mm -hmm. and eat with some real, I got, like, um, even being on tour with MIA back in the day, we went to some spot and stopped by her family's crib. And we ate something that just had a little spice in it. I don't know which part of our family was like, oh, it's not that bad. I'm talking about, I went back to the tour bus trying to find a cold towel to chew on. <laughs> <laughs> How's your general spice threshold? Like, you pretty good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. So what I base everything is, is even in my cooking or if I'm doing barbecue with people. Yeah. American spice level is flame and Hot Cheetos. Okay. Underneath that is mild. Above that is spicy. So, that's that's a good that that's a really good Mendoza line for yeah. the American spice palette. That makes a lot of sense. Because a lot of people hot don't Cheeto. even yeah. fuck with flaming hot Cheetos. And I ain't gonna front flaming hot Cheetos. They got some heat. They got it's some got heat. a little heat. A little bit. It ain't it ain't it ain't it ain't baby feet. You no. know what I mean? Like it's no. It it can get you if you go through a whole bag. Yeah. You are gonna need a little. You know. Yeah. The thing about. Your spot is... You, you afraid know, to eat oxtail on camera, dog? No, no, no. I've been. I've been eating it. <laughs> you catching me in moments where... No, oxtail's great. <laughs> this dude's... No, but um, like the wings, for example. The wings at Pizza Palace, you, you can't really... Like in Silver Lake, besides like the Douglas, the yeah, Douglas yeah. and Pizza Palace got the best wings on the east side of LA. Yeah, I've never been to the Douglas. And Douglas, I've, I've, crazy. Shout you out been to the Douglas? No, I go to Wingstop. <laughs> the Douglas. Yeah, I go to the wing stop or I, I go to birds. Yo, I fuck with birds. I like I get the birds, birds tenders. But on some wings? Yeah. On some wings as a like a wing maker, wing connoisseur, yeah. half a brand of I, developing is you, about Is wings. it worth going to? Because my thing is I get disappointed every time, no. you know, people like Ehh. They do a 24 hour comfy yeah. of of it. So they cook it and then they twice fry it. Mm. And it's whole wings. It's baby whole wings. I like that. So I like I like, I like that, that break off piece. Yeah. That everybody discards, like that little tail end. Yeah. If it's fried all the way through, you can chew it. It's like eating those whole so shrimp. So the Douglas, you're saying the Douglas. Douglas does that. All right, and then I'm gonna on, do that. on his side, he's got the, the, the green wings are my favorite. Yeah. The yellow wings go crazy and the red wings go crazy. But where, yeah. you, really, Bless you. where you really fuck them up is the it's pizza. It's a little spicy. It's a little spicy. What you eat? <coughs> pepper? Sorry. Yo. Bless you. You ate the pepper? It's all good. I did. Man, mm. I must have done. The Szechuan like, hit me in the back of the throat. Mm. I love Szechuan. The so only much. thing I haven't I had like at Pizza to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I haven't had is Pizza is the one thing that is the most popular is that pasta. I still haven't had. Oh, it. you haven't had the fucking no, Malai Rigatoni? No, pasta wow, then fucking good. What an honor, dude! I feel like if you like the restaurant and you haven't had that, then that's pretty good. Uh, I'm in there for the. But wings, I will you know? say though, there is something to be said and your about onion rings. There is something it, to be said about just like leaning into because we're all. I mean, your 
your parents are from Taiwan. I'm not sure if you're first generation or second generation. God, my or parents what. are fucking English. Yeah. I oh, mean, okay. My, yeah. Okay. My, my, I'm first generation. Like there is so many elements of even the Greek food. My mom's from Greece that I like that is Greek American. Yeah. And it's like, I, obviously you get a different thing that the, uh, the authentic version of the dish, but like, I like so someone taking something and making it more American because we are all, whatever we are, whatever our parents are, or where we come from, we're still American. So that like Indian American or whatever it is. What's an example of a Greek version of that? Cause I don't, see, I, I don't even know if I like can tell the Greek difference. Like a Greek American? Yeah. So, there's not much the on the West Coast, but yeah, a Greek yeah. diner. In a lot of ways, like I feel like Greek diners is the original Pija Palace because Greek people adapted their food to a diner setting. If we consider the diner a genre, yeah. is yeah. the evolution of the cafeteria or the cafe. <clears throat> I think Greek Americans, especially on the East Coast, were the first ones to kind of like bow their heads modify their food and be like all right yeah. you're gonna get an alga limono soup we're gonna call it chicken lemon soup mm -hmm. and then you know you're gonna get kebabs on rice and things like that but yeah. then you get a hamburger you get fried chicken you get fried so, fish yeah a lot of um the greek community when they came to the u.s especially the east coast this yeah. really isn't a thing outside of the east coast and if it is i'm just not aware they came and they opened pizza shops so they did like roast beef sandwiches like hot thinly shaved roast beef sandwiches pizza they did like greek salads with like kebab salads right. and like different types of uh yitos that they will do and like just making it super palatable and and like same thing like dialing down the seasoning and the spices or whatever that you would use traditionally at home and just making it more palatable for the community right and then that became like greek pizza as a thing yeah. in the east coast i think it's a rite of passage like every immigrant that comes here adapts their food and they do end up playing with things like pizza and wings and hamburgers and pasta mm -hmm. mm. i think i did the reverse like Instead of making it more palatable, I just went further into like, fuck you, like, mm. here's chilies and cumin and cor cardamom and coriander. Yeah. Yo, yeah, like, that's what I was saying, that pizza, the pizza shocked me because it was so good. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't, he definitely didn't give a fuck about the spice level. Because he, he yeah, was your like, shit you guys is gonna definitely try this pizza. very spicy and not the most approachable. Definitely but not approachable. I do think <laughs> it's smart because in fact, it is what people want now. Like, people love hot ones. They love doing the hot ones challenge. You know, like, they want ethnic food. Like, it makes sense right now. I think, in effect, you are doing the opposite action, which is you're not making it more palatable. You're making it more ethnic. You're bringing it closer to your culture. And you're also turning up the fucking heat. But it is in a vehicle that people understand. Exactly. Yeah, they yeah wait, I think the medium is very approachable. For it, like, yeah. all night. And that's... Yeah. That's the sign of something where it's like, it's not, you know, a popular, it's a popular neighborhood, but there's really nowhere to park. You know, it's in a hotel, yeah. it's in a hotel parking lot that already doesn't have too much parking. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like on each side of each street that you go, you don't yeah. know if it's sketchy or you don't know if it's family. Yeah. And people are signing up for it. What do you mean by, ske what do you mean by sketchy? Uh, I mean, like if you go anywhere towards Benton the other way. Yeah. Like a left is sketchy over there. Like, like for example, not to give too much, but I had somebody climbing through my window, like ch being chased by somebody with a gun, oh, like shit. all sorts of shit through the spillways. Like at night, like when you guys close, it gets real tricky outside. Like for people that don't know. We have a lot of crackheads in our neighborhood. We have a lot of crackheads. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just crack. Crack is easy to deal with. It's these trank heads mm. and these people hitting uh, like the, 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 the Russian, dog trank. The, the dog trank, but the Russian version of it is called crocodile. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which is stronger. That's yeah. why you guys moved up here. People are to doing, get away from the walking dead. I mean, yeah, yeah straight up LA. and down. Yeah. I mean, like. I remember seeing like Vice I mean, it's not why I'm about I mean, I'm here to and get away from everybody. they were going to like Brazil, like remote places to find I don't discriminate crackhead or just LA people. I'm just here uh, eluding everybody. Gotcha. But like, you know it's, nice. it's nicer on the These nice motherfuckers have energy and they walk up here. Like, really? Yeah. They're on some like Yo, power America, shit. Dude, there's mad homeless people in the yeah. entire country now. Like mm -hmm. yeah. any city you go to, it's, it's, it's like late 80s, early 90s shit. It's yeah, really the, a recession. On the days you guys aren't open and it's like really quiet on the block around 11 
Like I'll check your citizen app. Like I'll check my citizen oh, app. I had to delete this. Like I've uh, I'll citizen go outside and neighborhood like, going crazy, bro. bro. It's not bad because I'm like you know I come uh, born in the East Side of Detroit. I live in Chicago. I love yeah. being in neighborhoods with action because it's always you know you get what you you get what you pay for a little bit, but you get culture. Like mm -hmm. I live in MacArthur Park. It's beautiful during the day. There's ice cream trucks coming. But you might go to sleep with the door open, taking a nap, and now it's a SWAT team one of those. <laughs> you know, it's like very even. But yeah. well, like I was saying, like on days where they're not open, but like the block is the block is interesting. Mm. The days that they are open, it feels like the most popping part of the city. So Yeah, when it is you open, you got the you got the foodie situation over there. Yeah. So this is something I, I dealt with at Bauhaus. I'm curious how you feel about this. Okay. Like, it's like you open a restaurant, you want it to be a neighborhood restaurant. You yeah. have all these ideas. Like, <clears throat> you know, when I first opened Bowels, I was telling them, I was selling beef noodle soup. I was making every bow myself. The shit got out of control. God bless. I, I never was mad at the success of it. But <clears throat> it started at a certain point to not serve the neighborhood. And about like, I would say the third, fourth year, a lot of my friends weren't coming as much. And a lot of it was tourists and fans, people reading reviews that don't live there. And it's just a different vibe. Like, how do you feel about that? No, I totally agree with you. I think uh, the reason why a lot of cooks cook casual is so, uh, you know, you have a lower check average. You can see your friends more often because at 11 Madison Park, you're not, you don't know people in the dining room ever, yeah. right? Like they're, those guys come like once a year or whatever. Um, so yeah, I wanted to see my friends. Um, I thought it was going to be like a cool place to watch the game. Yeah. Um, it was no. the first time I came. I know. No, but just a shout out for people that do. He's yeah. Got it open for lunch now. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What I, I mean? will you say this though. You know lunch? what's annoying though? Sometimes there. I it's appreciate like, that because you were telling me about uh, you guys hadn't open for lunch yet, and then I caught a couple of good. Yeah. We. You know, like good beers on yeah. my way to the car, games yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like you can get it. What I was gonna say was annoying though is I was in there the last time watching, yeah. and I was like cheering. Yeah. And people were looking at me crazy. I'm like, dude, this is a sports bar. Yeah. This is a sports bar. <laughs> it's, I'm using it as a sports bar. Yeah. And I'm fucking shitting my pants and sweating my forehead. But you know, we got upright citizens brigade, or like uh, we got now we got an improv spot. Oh, you do. Block. So now we got all of the. You know, like the, the theater kids, they don't like sports. Oh, they come in after, yeah. Oh. L.A. is a funny place. Like, L.A. and New York is both a funny place. There are a lot of people that just don't watch sports. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... You don't like sports, right? Not. She does now. She watches... Listen, before I met Eddie, I said I would never date a man who's into sports. And then... That's Eddie, crazy. He played me a little bit in the beginning. I knew he liked sports, but he was like, I don't really... It's like, cool. <laughs> like, I watch a couple of games. I but I'm not like it. that OD. Hey, look, man, you be a player and then a year sports. in, he put a ring on my finger and was like, the game's on, bitch. You got Four like the craziest spread of teams. <laughs> Thank too. you, babe. Thank you. And Thank I was you. like, Thank you for so honoring now, the commitment. I watch. Thank you for honoring I'm the commitment. I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Commanders fan. I don't know. Yeah. If you like it, I'm yeah. going to watch we it. Yeah, we Knicks, like we it. Commanders. Yeah. You watch F1, though. You yeah. always watch F1. Michigan You're not a new Wolverines. F1 girlie. Yeah. Yeah. This is what come on, man. solidified Michigan our friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys should come over for a Michigan game. You guys should pop up for a Michigan game. Yeah. No, yeah. that's what did yeah, all all this fall. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we've been going to Mayor's house for all the games. Yeah, yeah. Like, and Mayor's the best. I'm gonna have him on soon, but nah, man. Like what's it, what's it called? What, what's my teams? Is Commanders, Knicks, Michigan Wolverines, Boston Red Sox. This how does this this doesn't make any and geographical then, sense? Yeah, it because I'm independent. Care about his life. So. Are, <laughs> are you a, are you yeah, a, uh, a no? Yeah, fan? so the Michigan no. when he well, told me the Michigan story, I was like. Oh, damn. Makes sense. Like, it makes why, sense. Why, <laughs> it, it, your indoctrination into Michigan sports, yeah. it's like, yeah, can't take shit for Eddie's from had, like, so many lives within his life yeah. that it's honestly, like, not, I'm not trying to put, it's hard to believe. It's like when you're a new person coming into this, like, when he was telling me we were dating and getting to know each other, I was just like, how was it all, <laughs> how did you do all that? Like, in that amount of time. And I feel like you just had so many experiences and so many life, like, eras and journeys yeah that it all because even when we, were, we met you read wrote three books had two restaurants and then was yeah, a lawyer a, a show on on abc, ABC. oh and on abc Vice. yeah there's a show about your life that you don't even yeah. like but yeah, yeah. That I don't even watch. <laughs> yeah you got a law degree when it was practicing as a lawyer to wrote and directed a movie like it's fucking wild it's yeah. weird. It's just wild I shit. just try not to think about it. I sit here like that's. I live up here. I play with the dogs. I hang with her all day. I like 
Just like, you want to hang out? Want to hang out? You know? <laughs> That's crazy, because, like, for a lot of people, like, 10 years younger than you, me, yeah. Olivia, like, a lot of people, we talk about this, like, you were, like, an inspiration in so many capacities. Oh, man. Just to, like, get to where we are. I mean, dude, sometimes I feel like I fucked up. Like, I let people down. Like, I Fuck know yeah. in the moment when I left Fresh Off the Boat and wrote the article for New York Magazine, I knew in my heart I did the right thing. I just wasn't feeling that show, but I also felt like that show was important and to let people just go with no, it. No, it was. Because you know? it was a, the first two seasons was a good watch before I knew yeah. it. I'm like, it seems pretty accurate, but as someone that also creates stuff and, you know, like I've had uh, bastardized versions of cool kid shit exist in front of me because <laughs> I didn't want to push the brand past what the threshold I knew it was. I mean, yeah. like, if somebody saw what cool kids look like and that's your opinion and it's not mine, how are you going to tell me? All right, yeah. well, then you guys can have it. Yeah. Do what you got to do with it. You know, like, I'm yeah. going to rebuild over here because I'm actually the one with the sauce and can keep moving. Yeah. Y'all can have that. So it's like, as a creator, there's, I know. Yo, Natasha was asking me the other night, like, how do you know Chuck? And like, what's Chuck's, like, what was his thing? And I was like, yo, there was, there was Pharrell in the clips and there was Cuddy, but then there was Chuck and Sir Michael Rocks and it was the cool kids. And they were, I think the first group that captured, like, not in a bad way, hype beast culture, like cool guy culture. And like, was like, that's us. Do you yeah. know what I mean? The Clips was street dudes from like, you know, Virginia Beach, you know, and they had Pharrell who was cool and he was doing his thing, but they were a little bit like left of center. And you guys were really like from this culture. We'd seen you guys around. And then when you dropped the bake shop, it was like the people's champ right. kind of mixtape album. That was a big moment. And you brought back a lot of like, I think like Miami, booty bass, freak Nick type yeah. of shit. Like, it was, was hard. Like, all the stuff I studied, and it was like, uh, you know, every everybody that's a creator has a little bit of, uh, what's the word? It's not like being full of yourself. It's, it's just like, you gotta over... Pluck. Yeah, but you got a supreme confidence that's like, it's unwaverable. It's almost mm -hmm. like, this boat is gonna float over here, and not a wave in the water can stop it type shit. Yeah. yeah. But I also knew that, you know, the stuff I was putting out, I actually saw it. You know what I mean? Like, I was mm -hmm. six or seven outside playing, watching yeah. Jeeps coming. Well, you had a story to tell, and you knew what the sound was in the moment. Yeah. Like, you really captured the sound of that moment. And then, I would say, for you, Aviz, the reason why me and Natasha was, like, excited to have you on the show, too, was there was a day, I think it was the L.A. Times wrote a review of PJ Palace. And I had not heard, was it the L.A. Times or New York Times wrote about you guys? L.A., L.A. Yeah. I had not known anything about this restaurant. Chuck was on it before me. But, like, I read this review, and it was about, like, a, a children of, like, Indian immigrants opening this restaurant. And the way you were talking, I just read it, and I related. I was just like, yo, man, this is, like, this, this is a very similar path to, like, what Roy Choi was doing, what I was doing. And I was just like, let me go support kindred spirit. And yeah. I was I was just really proud of you, dog. I appreciate it, really. I mean, I told you, you you and you and Roy definitely set me on the path to do. I don't think I, I don't know that I would have P PJ Palace would be here if like you two didn't exist. I wrote about you guys in the fucking my paper <laughs> to get into school. <laughs> nah, man, it, it means a lot. But like you, I, I don't know how to express it, but it means even whatever it means to you. It means even more to me that my work wasn't right. worthless. Do you know what I'm saying? No, of it's course. Like, I didn't really think about it from, optically from your point of view. Yeah, and it was like, to me, like when I met, when I met Tony Bourdain, it was a big moment because for me, I had always looked up to Tony as a good man. Yeah. I was like, you're using food and using travel to shine a light on communities that are not seen or recognized and like not respected. Most people come travel, they just, Americans come to a country and, ew, gross, you know, like, it was, it was that. And I love Andrew Zimmern, but this was like the Bizarre Foods era. Like, right. most people, they were very basic. It's just like, ew, like doing freaky stuff. Mm -hmm. Bourdain was the first one to travel on television and be like, it's not freaky. These people are not weird. Yeah. They're not mean. Like, give them a chance. And like, I really felt seen by Bourdain. And I was like, I like the way you see our culture. And I was just like, I hope I could do something like that for our own people. And, you know, one day it was like, so his producer, Helen Cho, came down to Bauhaus and like hit the bong with me, broke the bong at the restaurant. But we became <laughs> homies. And I get a call from her two weeks later. And she's like, yo, 
Tony's dropping this book, Medium Raw, at the Union Square, Barnes & Noble. He doesn't have a moderator. He told me to call you. He wants you to come moderate. I was like, what? I was like, when? She goes, right now. He just got here. You got like 30 minutes. I was like, I'm in a game. Like, we just won. She's like, just come to the Union Square. And I ran up there stinking and sweating. And I was in a teal Villa Brecken t-shirt and throwaway like fucking basketball shorts. Yeah. And I moderated this talk for him with a book I had never read. <laughs> when, was, when was this? It was like, I feel like this was 2011, wow. 2011, 2012. And Tony literally went out of his way to like introduce himself to me and just be like, you're doing good, son. Like, good job. It, it meant the world to me. Yeah. You know, that was one of the things I wanted because the same thing you're talking about him is what I was thinking about like with with you know as a young black man that's done hella shit on this earth and it's got a lot of well-roundedness everything about that man resonated with me especially when he did his Detroit episode given how you know America kind of shits on its young yeah kind of disposes of Detroit not knowing that you know it was like the second biggest city when when I was born you know like autos coming from it like to see him show that beauty and like the beauty of Detroit food, because in Detroit, Greek food and Arab food is like. Yeah. Dude, that was the last time I talked to Tone was actually he did the Detroit episode. And we were both thinking the same shit because oh, wow. I went to Detroit around like maybe a week after he went. And then we had our Detroit episode and we just emailed talking about Detroit and like what we thought. And was like, yo, it's cool. I think Detroit's back. Like Heidelberg is fly. All that. Yeah. 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 It was the last time I talked to him. The last yeah, I mean, time like, I talk to him. but it's it's the it's it's pretty much the ecosystem what both of y'all are talking about. Like, I've done stuff where I've been frustrated by it, but I knew that it had to be out. I'll be out somewhere and it'd be a group of kids walking up to me like, "Look, man, this story wouldn't happen without you." Mm -hmm. Like, if all this stuff wouldn't happen without the cool kids, and you're like, oh, "Yeah, goddamn, I'm glad that shit worked." One hundred and ten percent, bro. I I think I didn't even know what you looked like when you came into the restaurant, but I've been a fan of the cool kids for a long ass time. And then when I found out. Eddie took a picture of you when yeah. you were at the restaurant one day, and I mean when you were when you were here, and I was like, man, this guy be coming to the restaurant all the time, and he was like, this is fucking this is fucking Chuck English, like, and I was like, that's what Chuck English looks like, like I don't, there's not a lot of like video footage of you out no, there, like I'm, my name's you don't, bigger than me, I'm I'm a, that's I'm, mis I'm mysterious, man. that's kind of cool. I like that. I like going places, but like the the how I can tell you about my experience there, knowing that I've never taken anyone. And then, like, hey, we're all going to Pizza Palace. Like, I've been out to eat with a few people there. Yeah, you were fucking yeah. vibing, too. Like, we were playing, I, like, when we only play hip-hop R&B. I saw you, like, you were... No, dude, Yo, I'm about... curious, where do you like to eat? Where do I like to yeah. eat? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, so, these days, um, I stay pretty much in the Silver Lake area. I like to hit, even though this doesn't mean anything to a lot of people, I do go to all the, like, pressy restaurants just because I want to know, like, what they're up You're to. in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Industry vibe. Uh, and I, I, yesterday I was at Honor Jacques. Um, Justin's doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yangban Society is phenomenal. Mm. Um, I go there I'm pretty... I'm dying to go. Oh, you guys I haven't go? It. Dude, I, I want to go with you motherfuckers. Let's it go. It is so fucking fun. Like, yeah. whatever they're doing there, man, that place is, like, so fun. Have you been? Which place? I, I only didn't go out of Yangban solidarity no, because... They hired Taylor Takahashi, who played Boogie in the film, yeah. and then fired him three weeks after he got the oh. job. So just on some gang shit, I was like, unfortunately, I cannot come. Hired him to do so what? Funny. He's I, working there. Yeah. Because it's what been do you on mean? our list forever. It's been on the list. And I was like, I didn't know why we like. I was just like, oh, maybe yeah. we we're just not getting around. But I am at. You know what I no, mean? I know. Like you know, like I. I know Taylor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, that's my man's. What was he doing? Know? He was like, like a. I think he was managing. Or he was manager. like a manager of some sort there. But like, really? You know, yeah, it was you gotta still act. Fucking world. Yeah, you got to still act and work nowadays. Right? I, I, now, now I know yeah, that, bro. That Working actor, you know what I'm saying? Luckily, he booked another film, so, you know, he's good. He don't, he don't, he don't got to work restaurant no more. But like, he was there for a second. Wow. What okay. was the name of that place again? Yangban Society in the Arts District. Oh, they do like Yang fun coffee drinks too, right? Like they have. Like Arts a District's got a lot. Yeah. Of stuff. Oh, but yeah. Last time I was at Anajak, we ran into the Yang Yang Yangban Society guys. They yeah. introduced themselves. It was either Anajak or a Pija, and they were really nice. I was like, I can't be Pija. Like, they've never been. I don't. Right. They have never been to my restaurant. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> One, it was either you at your place or Anajak 
two chefs introduced themselves and they were like, yo, we're from Young Bond Society. And I was like, word, heard, oh, heard good things. Heard you fired my mans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but we'll I'm go, we'll go. Maybe we'll go with you. Yeah, no, let's go. We'll I want to go with you. Because it looks good. It's, it. Yeah, it's fucking fire. Yeah. It's just a fun time. Mm -hmm. That's a great way okay, to describe so, a restaurant. Okay, yeah, so you saying, so there's some industry, right? give us some non-industry joints. Non-industry you know? joints? Yeah. yeah, like where do you go when yeah. you're like, I'm hungry, this is my fucking spot. Yeah. And you oh man, sometimes some of them are like kind of basic. Like when I'm Good. drunk, yeah, like when I'm drunk late at night, two, three a.m. Uh, I go to Tommy's. You know, oh yeah, 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 Tommy's yeah. Burger. Love Tommy's. Mm -hmm. Good. That my spot has a center, the one uh, on uh, Beverly. Yeah, 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 the classic. The, that's like the one. They get like a chili burger. Yeah, have to. Mm -hmm. Have to. Uh, uh, what else? You know. Uh, Another place I used to go late night, just closing now, Pacific Dining Car. I know that you actually I used to love it. Yeah, that was my first yeah. job actually. Yeah. I was like right. scooping butter and shit. Bro, well, I went I got the baseball steak. Me and me and yeah. schoolboy Q went, got the baseball steak. That was the first time I went. And and he was telling me like Denzel ate there. Yeah. Training day. Training mm. day. And then yo, That's the sweeper, yeah, the yeah, sweeper yeah. at the Pacific Dining Car. And my favorite thing, if it's on a menu in LA, is sand dabs. Mm. If I see sand dabs, I'm ordering sand dabs. It's a yeah. local flounder that you only get off the shore in California. First time Flat I had fish. them was with you, and they're it's so incredible. Fire. I think we had them at Shay J. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. They're like little, they're, they're like smaller, sweeter, like thinner, but somehow firmer than mm -hmm. like flounder, but not as firm as like a halibut, like beautiful flat fish. Yeah. I love eating flatfish. My favorite spot that's local is Dino's. Dino's? Oh, Fuck yeah. Never. Chicken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. That's, oh, you got it. Oh, man, Dude, what? it's the peri peri chicken over the fries. Fire. Oh, the fries. Where, where is, is the sauce? They put down. chicken. Yes. Like, need to go. like a red chicken. Hell yeah. Where, where is it? Uh, it's in Union. It's in the Union yeah. area, like like Pico Union. Oh, yeah. okay. I got to like, go. If you really feeling it, mm -hmm. go to that one. But if you if you like... I don't. I don't expect everybody to like stand there with with the calmness that it would take <laughs> wait in line at Dino's. Yeah, because it's just in a hot ass area. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like any other. It's cool. It's like going to Langers. Food. Langers yeah, too. Close. Langers yeah, yeah, yeah. is hectic. That block. Yeah. It's like near MacArthur Park, but I, I I take my dad there. My dad loves Langers. I really I don't bug about neighborhoods in LA or New York. Honestly, I feel safe. No, because when yeah. you're eating food, really that's don't. when everybody's calm. Like I've yeah. noticed that. You go to the inner city, you find like a hot spot, like a, not hot spot tourist, but yeah. it's hot locally. Like a lot of action might be over there. Like at night, yeah. the gangsters might be out. But at the food spot, when you're waiting for the food, it's the most peaceful, safest thing. Nobody's gonna mess that up. The food vendors not getting robbed. Some of the cart vendors do. Mm -hmm. And that's All right, just, Chuck, what's some of your spots? Dino's. Uh, Dino's is definitely one. Serving Spoon is one of my favorite spots in the whole city. Ooh, ooh, yeah. where's that? Uh, kind of close to Inglewood. Okay. They, they got smoked turkey wings. I fuck with smoked turkey. Just yeah. generally, smoked turkey legs, smoked turkey wings. I love turkey. A lot of people don't like turkey. I'm a big turk like sand dabs and turkey. If I see it, I'm getting it. <laughs> and like high on the list, like gets a lot of action, but people don't really go there for the food as much. Is a scholar. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the taco spot in no. K Town. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like oh the that, one. that same yeah, center yeah, with yeah, the yeah. La like. Scala. Yeah, the one. The oh, owner wait. got the hat. Oh, Escala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the owner. Chino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OG Chino in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's like it's a good. That's a really good dive bar. It's a like, very I fuck good with dive, it as a dive bar. bar. And if you just get the dry wings, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the best, just regular fried chicken. Yeah. Asian dry wings goes. That's what's up. Come on. After the episode we did, I'm like addicted to eating wings. I've already stop. told my, my girl asked me the other day. Stop. She was just like, hey, can we, are, are we the type to just eat wings every day? Because we was on th our third day eating wings. And I was just like, I mean, come on. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of the best. We were doing wings last night. And I was like, damn, I ate like, I ate like probably 15, 20 wings. Yeah. I ordered a 20 piece the other day. Bro, cuts four. of meat, right? My favorite cut of meat is oxtail number one, right? Mm -hmm. Oxtail is for sure number one. I would say, Pig foot is too. And wow. I'm not trying to be weird, but I just okay. really like, I like that. pig knuckle. Then the Never been there. third, I would say, is probably beef rib. Mm. I'm a big oh, yeah. beef rib fan. Beef rib, when you when it can slide off the bone. Yeah. Then the fourth is the a chicken wing flat. Mm. Oh, chicken wing flat. Have chicken you had the butterfly flat. drumstick yet? 
butterfly. Yeah. So I've started oh, doing no. this. For the oh yeah, 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 yeah. The lollipop okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not even a lollipop. That's cutting off the yeah, skin. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah. I'm talking butterfly. Oh, you butterfly the drumstick so it's laying out flat. That it, that the will bone, be fly. It's like having a chicken with a handle. Yeah, because I don't really like <laughs> the drum that you much. Like. That is a good idea. I mean too, yeah. That is a good and idea. It, and it, it cooks faster. Then my fifth is a T-bone steak. Like a dry aged fat T bone steak. I really like it. Oh, yeah. I don't like filet that much, but I like a New York strip off the mm. bone. I like steak. We I share, because like you could share your T bone with your girl. The T bone is yeah. a cute date night steak. I like when they slice them up, though, like the bone right there. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Peter Luger. Yeah. I like yeah. That too. Where are you guys eating steak in LA? Musso and Frank, number Musso one. Musso and Frank, classic. Frank. Yeah. I really, we, ha we don't go often, but I really like Dear John's. Oh, we um, love Dear John's. Musso and Frank for sure. And then I haven't been, but Lowry's. Lowry's is fine. Been Lowry's I fucking yet. love Lowry's. Prime rib. Yeah. I haven't been fire. either, Tuck. And I'm dying to go. You know what? You haven't been there? No, check oh, the story out. Bro, wait, 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 we wait. going there. Yeah. It was almost like a 15 year walk because they got one in downtown Chicago, right? Yeah. And I, I think they started closing a lot of them. I used to just walk by it to get to the train. Bro. And I'm like, seasoning salt got a restaurant. Seasoning salt got a restaurant. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, because that's how I know Lowry's. <laughs> Chicago has the best steak houses in the world besides yeah. Peter Luger. Chicago steakhouses. I think Chicago has the best steakhouses. I haven't had, to, I haven't been privy to try in Peter Luger, but Kenny Beats did a, a burger with uh, Love Hour. That was the Peter Luger burger, and I don't know how they. Oh, did he it. copied the Peter Luger burger. No, they he, they did it somehow. It was like a combination of something. No, nah, you can't. You honestly, that I love Kenny Beats. I love Kenny Beats. So I'm gonna specific. tell you something. I'll tell you why you cannot beat the Peter Luger burger, because I go to the butcher that Peter Luger uses. When you go into that butcher shop with their dry aged meats and steaks, the best ones are already tagged Peter Luger. They've already uh, gone in, all of David Burson's aunties, they've picked out everyone. When I went and looked, I'm like, damn, it's all scraps for everybody else. They are, awesome. already spoken for Peter Luger. Yeah. So when they make that burger, it's the best trimmings from that dry aged you know, steak. They pick number one, it's their bro, first choice. Uh, no. Just no. Just, just be able to get the best cuts. Because I think they've been around buying for a long power. time. Peter Luger, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, power. yeah. They're like in the What's the movie? The uh, what's the movie that just came out? The last Scorsese movie? I mean, if you think about steak, right, I Chuck? Know, I didn't see it. Steak, Irishman. Yeah, you, yeah. you asked me if they in the mob. Steak is like selling drugs. Yeah. It's like there's only so many. You got to kind of fight for the best product. Not every butcher is going to sell to you. If you down the list and you're not buying as much, they're going to miss your shipments and miss your deliveries in a restaurant. 100%. When your restaurant's hot, yeah. you up the list. You're going to have the better shit. It's, it's like, you know, and there's no draft lottery. You know, mm. like with restaurants, it's just if you buying a lot, you're going to get first pick and you're going to get the best stuff. You're going to get attention from your meat purveyor. Yeah. Right? And like, also, you're just selling off the price you're buying. So it's like my dad would always have me in the restaurant cutting each New York strip because he was like, if people are lazy and they don't cut it right, that's how you lose the money. So right. it's like you got to cut it right, serve it, get it at a good price, negotiate it. It's like Mr. 17.5. That's gangster that's shit. That's Peter Luger. like boxing. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? like yeah. Anything that has a high-end price ticket, somewhere down the line is somebody controlling the, the, Some, the, yeah. the, the supply chain. Yeah, it's like that's how the mob started. That's what, I mean, I'm into that shit. I just yeah. like knowing. I mean, meat packing yeah. was all union. Come on, man. The Irishman. When yeah. I watched, like, oh, so that's what y'all was doing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you can control and and, mm -hmm. and determine the prosperity of yeah. of anything through supply chains. So and there's no like, gangs with it now, but it's just like, yo, you're a big steakhouse. You're gonna get your first pick. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the you, gang, you don't need violence no. if you're going to ch choke off somebody's money supply. So it's like yeah. they're walking in there and you got the shit steak. Yeah. I'll tell you a good story, man. So I've been, I've been writing on some shit for, with, with I've, been, I've been talking to the creators of Billions, right? This is pre-strike. Okay. And I, I sent them a, a pitch for a Billions thing. And they gave me a really cool note because I wrote in a violent scene into my pitch for the episode. And they're like, yo, Eddie, you know... We love this script, we love these scenes, but we kind of have hard rules in our series where like we only intellectually spar. Right. We don't want physical violence. Mm -hmm. And we would challenge you to like submit something that's like intellectually violent. And I was like, yo, I like this. And cause, I love cause they have violence. a they're a white collar crime show. Yeah. And I was like, yo, as an immigrant kid, I was exposed to a lot of physical violence, right? 
And I was like, this is the evolution. You're moving up Maslow's pyramid of needs. I was like, wow, I get to work or write on a white collar show and I'm using intellectual violence. I was like, this is fly. Yeah. This is fly. I was like, this is Sun Tzu. The and I butcher shop. Yeah. Intellectual violence. I, I immediately texted my therapist because I'm like, yo, there's actually not room for violence in my life. Because I used to always apologize for my dad and try to like reason that there were certain moments in life where violence was appropriate. And I'm starting to realize that like if you free your mind and you don't connect it to your parents and you don't feel the need to cover for them, there are very few instances where we need violence in this world today. No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even get the stuff done. As somebody that like, I ain't never been like an enforcer or a kid, but I, I, people that know me know like a fight with me is just like, it's not in your best interest. You got two speeds. <laughs> I got two speeds, but like also realize that you, the person you want to knock out the most likes that shit. Yeah, so once you get in one of those, when you get somebody in front of you or like, you know, those people that get in road rages and want to get out the car. I had this situation happen. And I communicated so well with the person that got out the car that when he got in the car, it almost looked like he almost recognized me for Chuck English or he got it. But we come to something, he cuts me off, I just hit him with the horn. But he, he drives off, does all this shit just to stop at one light. Gets out the car, he has no clue who's in the car, right? He gets out the car and starts walking over towards me. And I just basically calmly like, you know, showed him some eyes like, bro, I'm really ashamed of you at this point. But you don't know what got on me. And I'm one of those American citizens that if you would have walked up to this car, I would have blew your head off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, yeah. it can go that yeah. quick. Yeah. And when you, he was gentle in that. He realized he was in the wrong. I didn't need to say anything to make me feel like I won. I just wanted us as two black men to go home. We in a, a neighborhood that's not ours. Yeah. yeah. This should have never happened. See, I wrote a character in Billions that like carries that would have it in the whip, right? Because right. my dad, I remember a dude tried to run us off the road when my dad was driving us to Chinese school one day. Okay. And he followed us off the highway all the way to the gas station, ran up on the car. And all of a sudden, I see the glove compartment open. My mom hands my dad the piece. And I was like, what? I had no idea because I was like 12 years old. My dad gets out and is just like, do not fuck with my family. Guy got back in the car. We went to Chinese school. And I was like, whoa. Mm. That's what your dad does. That's, that's what, what a dad? man does. Yeah. And now I'm learning like the other, there's no character in the billions now that would do that. Right. And I'm like, they don't need to. No. And I'm like, whoa, this is, this is ill. Like when you're in a lower segment of society, you have to be violent at times or there are so i wouldn't say point, have to, to that's no no because you're right you got to get your yeah. point across like if you got something nice or it's like homies i knew that in high school you got a cutlass you got a cutlass on rims yeah if people don't think that you could kill them they're going to take your yeah shit. and the reason is because rich people make the rules here so they want us to follow these rules because if we follow the rules we're never going to challenge them right but it's about this is what's very hard about coming up from a working class or immigrant class background is you have to use your immigrant tools and break the rules that come up. But once you're on the level, you did the hardest part is to turn on a dime, pivot, and be like, nah, now I have to let that go. Right. John ja Morant's struggling with that. Yeah. AI struggle with that. Melo struggle with that. Like, you know, it's a real thing if you yeah. came up with violence and you came up breaking rules because you saw it was the only way out to turn on a dime and be like, all right, now I'm gonna clean my shit up. Yeah, because you get to a certain point where those people use your rage as like value for them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. look at this motherfucker, look at this motherfucker, look at this motherfucker. Like, we knew y'all were gonna fight. Yeah. And then you get to certain spots in like music business or whatever, where you're getting, you Raise know- Raise your like, voice in the office. No, yeah, well, you, you could look at your, you could look at your contract and your contract, contract, contract condemner said, hey, Hey, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Your mama's a bitch, all yeah. that shit. You damn near can have that in legal jargon. And as soon as you nut up, you exercise from it. Yeah. You know, you and then can. those are the people, like I told you, where it's like if you was to threaten to smack them, they put their face out. Like, I like that shit. Now, what you gonna do? Mm. Now, if your threat of violence is like they get off on it. Cause some of these, I ain't putting people business out there. But, but now you fuck with your money too. Man, you got your some of these your guys career. That, that pay to get their ass beat by these dominatrix. <laughs> if you if you know any of these, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, sex yeah, yeah, yeah. yo, high power people will get put in plastic all day with a mouth tube. Yeah. And just sit there and get ignored. They you got a different them? type of shit talking. It's a different type of shit talking that crawls under your skin. But let me ask you, what was your like upbringing like? Like, how did you learn to hustle? Like. You know, because you're saying your parents were from England, 
Yeah. And then you were born here? I was born here. Word. Like, what was it like for you growing up, kind of like reconciling the Indian home and the American, like, wilderness? I don't know, man. I, it's hard for me to, like, uh, I feel like the 10 year gap between you and me is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Like, just in, like, because yeah. I, I, when I looked around, like, I saw mostly ethnic people. Yeah. Like, yeah. there was no real, like, in my part of LA, there weren't a lot of white folks. Yeah. Like, so I didn't feel any different than anybody else around me. So I felt like I lived a pretty normal brown boy life. So, yeah, no, yeah. like you got the valley. Yeah. It's like when I, like Boogie Taylor Takahashi, when he tells me about his upbringing in Oakland, he's like, yo, my school is predominantly Asian. And I was like, whoa, that would have been crazy to grow up there. Right. You know, and then you were in a very multicultural city like yeah. Boston. I never, we had, yeah, it was never just like one thing. Yeah. Where well, are you from? Boston. Okay. Yeah. I put myself, with the help of my parents, in just several different situations, like, you know, like, a black elementary school, you know, like, maybe move to a magnet middle school with different kids, but yeah. at that time, I'm playing Little League with nothing but black kids. Move to the suburbs, yeah. get a hard, get a hard 90 degree angle switch when I'm only playing with white kids, and then I go to high school, and the first two years of high school, Freshman, sophomore, I'm like one of maybe one of twenty. Yeah. And then junior year, senior year, school goes half. So it's like I've been able to see and know. Like it's almost. Been but a it blessing. makes sense yeah. because yeah. it reflects in your personality. You're yeah. one of my, you know, you're one of my best friends out here. And and honestly, you're one of those dudes that I can call any time because you know how to move in any room. Yeah. And you're still you. You'll wear the same basketball jersey, same hat, everything. But you know how to switch your flow. You got a lot of flows. Got to have a lot. You got to have a lot of yeah. flows. Otherwise, doors are closed to but you. But you know what the key to that? If we're sharing stuff on here, it's like a lot of people are scared to hang out with themselves. Yeah. Like hanging out with yourself and like being being that one black kid at a school where you're an athlete, but all the kids are white. You're sitting at lunch, but like the songs they're talking about, like hearing Iron Man on the jukebox. But you coming from buying just Mace and Puff and No Limit for like the past four years, you get to lunch and there ain't even one selection. We had a jukebox in our lunchroom at Notre Dame High School. First culture class I ever had where I went to the jukebox and the only song on there was Criss Cross. It wasn't even Jump. The only black song, it was, it was the Criss Cross wiggity, song wiggity was Super Cat. No, oh. it was on the second album. Oh, gross. So I'm sitting there, I'm listening wow. to Sweet Carol. Do you know any other Criss Cross song other than Jump? Tonight. I only know Jump. <laughs> I only know Jump, and I really only know it because it's been in like every commercial. Yeah. So I definitely like, know them when they play because I wore the shit out of that album when I was like 10. Man. Yeah, I, I bought <laughs> my, first, my first album I paid with my own money that I worked for was R Young, Rich, and Dangerous. Oh. Criss Cross, where it was on the white yeah, cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. That came out at the same time Bone Thugs came out. So my mother was really like... Bro, she my was really first on tape was Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff, Nightmare on My Street. Oh, sh the tape? Yeah, the, whole the album tape, or the single? cassette. Yeah. Nightmare on My and Street. And you and I, I feel like, because like that 10, 12 year, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I was and like, well, you bought shit? I was like, maybe my parents bought me like Spice Girls and shit when I was a kid. But then I, when I, by the time I was like into my own, Lime like Wire. it was LimeWire. I was just like, I got you a virus. So yeah. it's like, yeah. it's like <laughs> third generation. Your computer got chlamydia, yeah. mom. It's like Your kid won't know shit. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to make that game. Right, right. I'm going to be like, we're going to the fucking store and I'm yeah. going to buy a beatbox and show them a cassette. I will create a pop up to where this child can buy a CD because I'm not going to raise a bitch. I will okay. tell you I something, can. though. You know what? I respect all mediums of music, cassette, records, digital, everything. One of the illest things I saw Dan Auerbach do, he was in a session with Leon Michaels. They were doing some shit for the ARCs and they played something live, recorded it onto a tape recorder and then played it back out onto the record so that it had the texture of a cassette. I've recorded with Dan. I Ill. Love, bro. That, Genius. Listen, like, that, dude, you'll sit up there. I did a song with them, like, back in the day when, like, Dame Dash was doing a whole bunch of, uh, like, kind of, like, collaborative shit. Yeah. He had Black Keys, RZA. Yeah. I sat there with them. Oh, you was working with him on that because yeah, he did I the did most deaf. He did the RZA yeah, shit. I worked on that. Yeah. We sat up and we drank whiskey one time, and I just sat on the drums. I didn't even know nothing was being recorded. And he's sipping whiskey. He's playing something on the piano. And the next thing you know, I go into the bathroom. I come out. It's all recorded. Damn. I'm like, damn, that shit sounded crazy. He's yeah. like, yeah, that's how we do it. Yo, two most talented people I ever met was him and Pop Smoke. Like, when I watched the two of them work, I was just like, Oh, y'all can do some shit 
I have never seen. Like Dan is just running around in his zone, turning knobs, turning dial. It's like the hand of God touched him. Like I talked to Leon about it too, because Leon yeah. will get in the zone playing, and it's like hand of God. But Dan, like Dan, got that hand of God. You know who I heard was like that, and I just I'm waiting to run into him. Just haven't DJ Quick. I oh. Heard I heard he's actually way more of a wizard than the wizard you heard he was. Ooh. And that, like, it, seeing DJ Quick move in the studio is the only thing I've, I've... It's the only... Honestly, the only person I look up to I'm having. All right, so if you can meet one person, hero, DJ Quick, that's the one you want to meet? Music-wise. Uh, Anything-wise. All right, hero-wise... Oh. This shit is fun to think it about. Is. I just knew this the other day. All right, uh, I'll give you three. Three, three people you want to meet different, different, different craft. All right. DJ Quick. Oh, different craft. Different craft. DJ Quick. Brad Pitt. Oh. And uh, Lawrence Fishburne. You want to learn how to beat your kids on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking no. about that. That's that Brad Pitt tight out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad could teach you that shit. <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you got in trouble Didn't for? Didn't he hit his kids on a plane? Brad Pitt. Hit no, his. no, Brad Pitt did. Well, there's like this whole allegedly him and he was on a flight with his family and there's something like a something got it got heated and allegedly he like maybe choked out his kid or put hands on his kid and then they that got off that flight. Yeah, I love Brad Pitt. I love Brad Pitt. But I think Brad he had Pitt. a drinking problem at the time. Like I don't know. Uh, yeah. She was because one day I was talking about how much I love Brad Pitt and then she was telling me about this and I was like, Well, no, because I'm gonna pay my respects to the situation, but I still love Brad Pitt. Yeah, the internet. Yeah, the internet. I need to see the video. I need Solange to leak the video. You know what's crazy? I feel like since the subject, but that was like why R. Kelly slid for like an extra fifteen years. Everyone fucked with him because we didn't hear. Hey, let's not say Voldemort. You know what I'm saying? Let's not say Voldemort. We weren't playing an R. Kelly fucking mixtape. Like I admit it, I played it. I admit it. Freaking sensation is a hard ass fucking song, bro. Have you guys had a conversation about like all this AI music stuff that's going on? Right now, oh, yeah, hold on though. We uh, sticking okay. off. Okay, okay you okay. can meet anybody. We'll, we'll so that's what he, he said. DJ Quick, you said Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt, Lawrence me, Fishburne. That's a solid three. That's a solid three, bro. Yeah, and then let's update that by the summer. Okay. 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 Right, that's Abish, your three. Your three. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, oh, oh okay. another one. I like, I like it. it. I like Shia it. LaBeouf. Spicy. Uh, Spicy. <laughs> bro is always in character. Let's go with, um, who the fuck do I want to meet? I still, this is probably more achievable for you guys, but I still haven't met Roy. I haven't met Roy Troy. I like Oh, we got you. We got you. We, we I just, with Roy. Roy is the greatest, man. Roy is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I still like, haven't met him. Thoughtful, respectful. Like, yo, Roy, if, when I'm, Roy pops in my head, I just think like integrity. Yeah. Good guy. So Roy, number one. Roy. And then, one. uh. Um, probably somewhere in the someone in the athletic space now. Um, maybe like Jay Lynn, dude. Jeremy Lynn, just oh Jeremy okay. Lynn. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, like, bro. Honestly, really. I want to. Yeah, I'd, wow. Jeremy's I'm cool. Third, third, third Jeremy's cool. Okay. Jeremy's cool. I think he mad. I snapped on him in Boogie, but it was like that's good for the character. <laughs> but like, I like Jeremy. He just scored oh, forty the other day. It's like forty-five. In, in Taiwan, like set, a, set a record for something in yeah. Taiwan in MacArthur Park. No. No, I like, it's so, damn, you really don't like it. <laughs> no, I love Jeremy Lin. Like, I just think it's funny when it's just like, it's funny. You know, it's fun to fucking snap on some shit. Vince Staples? Vince Staples. I'm just saying a bunch that's of shit. That's, that's, that's a good three. Yo, yeah. I did a that's style a commercial one. event. Very, yo, you got all three of them very respectful people. Yeah. 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 Like you, like, you like yeah. the respect. I first see it. But I, I mean, I, that was an accident, right? I, I don't know that they're. I like upstanding, respectful people. Yeah. I like that. Could I recommend Ben Affleck? Okay. <laughs> after, yeah. seeing, after, yeah. seeing, yeah. after seeing Air, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ben Honestly, Affleck, yeah. oh, he did He's his so thing. Ill what? He did his thing. I forgot it was him for a second. He's yeah. so ill in that that, movie. that movie just kept getting better than me. With after I saw shorts. it, damn, I woke up the next day like, damn, that was a good movie. Yeah. What about my day the next day? Like, yeah. Damn, that was a good ass movie. So if I said three, right? Yeah. One is our neighbor, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. I will, like, I'm never going to ring his doorbell, but I would love to meet him not in a neighbor setting. Mm -hmm. You met right, him in the a neighbor setting? Master. No, no, no. Like no. He, he drives by, all, we, we wave and shit like that, but, like, I'm not going to bother him. Like, I love this dude. Mm -hmm. I did that to you. It'd be t but 
I can't no, even but we can't, Yeah, can't even that's different. If he like, came, to like, right if he right. came yeah. over, <laughs> I'd be like, yo, what's yeah. up? Yeah, if he came over, I'd yeah. be like, oh my God. Even if he would was you like, like to your see dog's my wife's foot. Yeah. No, truly, if he came over, I would just show him my foot, yeah. I think. I would be like, yeah. oh, thank you, thank you. Yo, I'd show him my foot. <laughs> I'd be like, pick whatever one you want. You want hey, both? Man, I don't know. I actually got a pretty cute foot. Quinn, you, do. you know, you do come through, come butt. through, check out the foot. You have good, <laughs> good toes. <laughs> yeah, thank you, babe. I would say Quentin, number one. Number two would be Juno Diaz, but I already text with him, but like, not, like I just love that fool. Yeah. And then three, yeah, it's probably because I walk by him on Runyon and I never have the confidence to stop him, mm. is Kevin Smith. Yeah. Okay. I really love Kevin Smith. And then... If I could speak Japanese, I would probably put number one on the list, Beat Takeshi. Mm. I really, really like Beat Takeshi. Like, a lot. Yeah. I'd throw Wong Kar Wai. Wong Kar Wai would be great to me. But those would be the dudes I'd yeah. want to meet. What about you, babe? Okay, I really would love to get so fucked up off martinis with Kris Jenner. She seems Ooh. like the best Ooh. time. That is my, that's my ultimate MILF. Mm -hmm. I love her. Mm -hmm. I think I she's a genius. Ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a fucking genius. She has literally, she, she runs our current world. I like that. World. That's probably more possible than having martinis with her. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, I would love to just like chill at like wherever, wherever her spot is, like polo lounge, daytime martinis with Kris mm -hmm. Jenner. We're both mm -hmm. wearing fur Definitely coats because the weather's perfect. And like, I feel like she would want to smoke a cigarette with me. Like, I feel like we'd probably- That's a good hang. We'd probably be smoking an American Spirit or like, maybe like a Virginia Slim. Maybe good she's hang. a Virginia Slim. Good probably. hang. Yeah. And then, Dead or Alive or just Alive? Dead or Alive. I okay. kind of like Dead or Alive. Oh, dead or Alive, that changes the Yeah, it does. Alive. 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 Let's go Alive, let's stay Alive. All right, alive. okay, if I could go do alive. Dead, I would say Ayrton Senna. Oof. But because it's Alive, I would say, I'm kind of tor I would say Daniel Ricardo because that is oh, my man's oh, and oh. I love him and I think he's just like such a fun I feel like you he'd be drink a fun hang. Beer out of a boot? I would want to drink beer out of a boot. He's an F1 driver and oh. he's from Australia. He's like he's not driving this season, but he's just he's he's F1's golden boy. Oh yeah, that's a different type of that's I love a different him. type of Damn, he made a horny yeah. pick. That's, that's big, a horny pick. That's a big yeah. paper. You know what? And then and then Eddie's not going to like this one. But Benicio del Toro. I was gonna throw that My man. I was gonna throw that on You know what? I'd like my to meet Alexis mans. Texas. That's what I'd like to I'd like Go to meet for Alexis it. Texas. Go for you it. Know, I would. She'd probably come on the pod. Benicio del Toro. I would I just would. like to hang. I'm not trying to do anything. No, yeah, horny. Benicio no, Benicio and Fear and Loathing is it was either Benicio him or, or it was either him or, or, or Lawrence Fishburne. He's a Pisces yeah. too, right? He's a Pisces. What's his what's his day? He's I think a Feb Pisces. That Feb voice Pisces. he uses in, fuck with uh, well. in Unusual Suspect is still the He's greatest a monster, yeah. performance. Yeah. The greatest performance I've ever what's seen. What's that yeah. movie? Uh Sicario. 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 Goes, like dude, him and Sicario goes bananas. Yeah. When he plays funny guys. Yeah. Yeah. When he plays a funny yeah. guy, yeah. you can't beat him at it. No. He's good in anything. He really is good at it. Assumingly one. hilarious. Aging like a bottle of wine. See, <laughs> I, I want to do a movie hell. with Benny. I would love to do a movie with Benicio Del Toro. You would be barred from set. <laughs> barred from set. Absolutely barred from set. Unless like we salivating. also casting like Catherine Zeta Jones. And all right, everybody got I would like to, to see. I would like everybody. to see a rom com with Benicio Del Toro Catherine and Catherine Zeta Jones. Jones. They are so fucking hot. Yeah. I would baddest. like to see them do yeah, and if anything they went on, on like camera. a vacation and were swinging, I would just be there with. Yeah. I would like to talk to I would, Michael I would Douglas. Be, I would be with Michael the upside Douglas, down pineapple over my Michael head. Michael Douglas got game. I would yeah, love right. to you talk know, to Michael you're Douglas. You know what's crazy? Michael Douglas has to have game because they're in their prenup. He got cancer from eating pussy. What? Yeah. No, Michael you Douglas. You have to run yes. that back and explain oh, no, the whole thing. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Prenup. This is such a hot topic on Twitter right now. You can get cancer from eating pussy. I'll send you some links. Yeah. Really? No. What? What kind of pussy? How do you get? get is there like? Oh, I don't know the science. Is it contagious oh. or something? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know the or science. Or it's like mouth cancer. But you can cancer? get cancer from anything. Yeah. Yeah, they told you like no. three years okay. ago. I don't. Okay, understand. Michael Douglas in the Guardian, a reputable British newspaper. Please, <laughs> I'll do an oral reading. Pause while you go to the bathroom. Asked whether he now regretted his years of smoking and drinking, usually thought to be the cause of the disease. Michael Douglas replied, "No." 
because without wanting to get too specific, this particular cancer is caused by HPV, which actually oh. comes about from cunnilingus. My man. No, legend, that's bullshit. Michael no, Douglas. that's actually bullshit. HPV does not come about from cunnilingus. You can literally, because I know women that have HPV that have gotten it from men because it's undetectable in men. Like you could have HPV and you can get that through sex. He could have been the originator of the HPV. Yo, I'm not say, I'm not taking a saw. I'm just Fuck saying. this guy from kind of giving pussy a bad name. He just doesn't want men to eat pussy. Fuck that. Do you know, I'm going to eat it. I, life or death, I'm He's eating He's like, it. oh, I was just, I was smoking a pack a day and drinking a bottle of whiskey, but it was pussy that did me in. I'm I like, feel like I'm, I'm going to send you this <laughs> article <laughs> from The Guardian. That's crazy. That's like being like, yeah, I got mercury poisoning from taking a dip in the ocean when you were eating sushi every day. There was a cook at Bauhaus, Bye. right? <laughs> he was He was a manager. It <laughs> still could have been the ocean. You never know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> like, I don't like that they're giving <laughs> pussy eating a bad name. So there was a funny, there was a manager <laughs> once at Bauhaus that was like one day like yo eddie i have to i have to take like a couple weeks off i'm like what like what do you mean what am i gonna do like i like you're not gonna give me two weeks like it's just it's tragic man my my girl has cancer right now i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry like take the time whatever whatever you gotta do i'm like fuck what kind of cancer he's like she has HPV. I'm like, motherfucker, you're working because you gave her that shit. You well, gave her that shit. You're well, going to give me two weeks, you man. You can get HPV and it doesn't mean that <laughs> it is going to develop into cancer. It's just you, you're a carrier for yeah. HPV. And it, it I was might like, this turn ain't into serious? Cancer. Like, you don't need to miss, miss two weeks of work. If it, if right it now. hadn't turned into cancer, These it's employees, serious. man, they'll find a reason it, bro. I was like, H, you're going to... You're taking two weeks off because of your girl having HPV? To that, be real, that though, like, as a person who's had a job before, like, I get your bo- I get where you're coming from as the boss, but, like, honestly, <laughs> if I found out I had HPV, had I would immediately call my boss and be like, I need a month. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't quit I my do. job. No, like, if you had sure. HPV, I wouldn't quit my job. No, but I'm just saying I understand, like, Doesn't it have, I understand the theatrics. Isn't it symptomless? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, no. it, can, it can develop into cancer. Like, it's like, it, it like could get serious. For, it's like mono for grown-ups. It was, Remember, no, nobody mono, gets mono. I was like, you're going to quit. No, yeah. mono was crazy. I had mono. I couldn't swallow, and I literally couldn't move my body. I was, like, the sickest I've ever been in my life. I used to be in high school, like, Online trying to get shit. mono yeah. yeah they'd be home <laughs> off of school i was dude, telling y'all. this dude i was like no, i had it I be like, a man like scarface and half baked tell everybody fuck you and leave fuck you fuck you fuck you're cool exactly too. that's how you quit a job yeah don't be coming in here telling me you're quitting because your girl got hpv doggy well Not, he said he needs a couple weeks so you know, he just listen, needed you're gonna lie. Yeah. Like throw extras on the lie. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Don't do small yeah. lies. Yeah. Parlay yeah. the lie. Yeah. No, she's parlay that bad, shit. Dude, you got a five team parlay. Yeah, but how is saying that she has HPV not? Yeah. Well, because she has HPV, he doesn't mean it needs to turn into cancer. I remember one time. How do we know that? I was at this job that I remember like I, this was when I was really young, and I think I might have been an intern and. I had, I was dating this guy at the time who was just like not a good, like he was like, come hang out with me, like leave your, leave work and hang out with me, bye. Like that's not who you need to be dating. Right. So I'm like, bet. <laughs> so I like walk in my boss's office, just hysterical crying for no, nothing's happened. I just want to go hang out with my man. <laughs> now I'm hysterical Dude. crying. He's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. It's not, I don't think he's going to make it. And he's like, go. And then I left and I was like, Someone, I, I feel like I just put a really bad juju on someone I know. You know what I mean? Like just putting that out there in the to, universe. You set feminism back 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I would never I do that it. now, but I, I was just it. like, I was like 18. I might, I might, we might have been freshly 18. Just to anybody fine. about to lie, if you're about to lie today, just overcook it. Yeah. Because if you're an under liar, that means you're a real liar. If you just throw some like crazy ass dinosaur bone shit together. Yeah. All right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, good shot. No, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you, you know, we're gonna ask you then. What's up with the foot sign? You know, we're gonna come yeah. back to the foot sign now. Like, I feel like, can yeah. we bring, What's up? What, what's going on with the foot controversy? Okay. When I took this shit over, yeah. right? Um, I just don't like the. the I, I have a personal beef with the foot doctor himself. Oh. Right? oh. I don't want. Wait, the, you know the foot doctor? Well, I mean, cause yeah, pretty much. I mean, here's uh, a big question. Listen, yeah. he you, was not the, practicing, like. What is it called? Uh, or what is a foot doctor called? A podiatrist. 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 Was he still practicing when the sign came down? I thought he had like closed his practice a long time ago, and they were like, "Let's keep the sign." No, he was still practicing. Wow. Nobody went though. I mean, nobody okay. was there. Yeah, <laughs> no. he nobody. wasn't a good foot doctor. 
No, bro. Well, no. do how many people frequent a podiatrist? Do you guys a ever lot. go? Some I don't go. Have fat, I've flat never been. Feet. Some yeah. people have like foot problems. I've, I've seen a podiatrist. Okay. Yeah. I guess really yeah, just because I want a professional medical opinion on my foot. I forgot to do a hot no, This was when I was a kid and I needed inserts in my yeah. shoes because I had flat feet. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. But not many. It's not like an orthopedic surgeon where, like, yes, we understand what you're doing. A podiatrist, I'm like, are you? <laughs> okay. It's just like an OBG. It's like outdated. We have Dr. Scholes now. Yeah. You know, he's our worldly podiatrist. But so no one was going to the foot doctor. Right. And then what? So my dad owns that thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. He owns the whole complex. Okay. Yeah. And so nobody's going to the food doctor. Yeah. And like I wanted to open up a restaurant and okay. like it makes sense for me to do it in yeah. that neighborhood. I own we own the building and I thought I could bring value to the building. So so a neighborhood people hang out, it makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we told him, like, hey, listen, buddy, it's time to go. You know? He uh, his lease was up. Yeah. And Fair. uh yeah. His okay. lease was up and he wasn't like he wasn't uh there's just there's nothing going on and he was like yeah. all right i'm gonna leave was he older too and probably not gonna be doing this for much longer i don't know he it's okay. it will he it's there's a kingpin doctor oh okay. kingpin foot guy okay and then he has multiple foot guys across the city got it okay so this is like a franchise it's uh yeah i guess wow it's a city mb of feet yeah this is a starbucks got it starbucks of feet what starbucks yeah mm -hmm. so he was uh operating he was he was running his business yeah. and then we told him hey it's time to go then he he sued us right saying like hey um he sued you for yeah. not renewing the lease well no 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 he was saying that the lease had been renewed okay okay um boss mm -hmm. left it took yeah. a year and then by that point i was so bitter i was like fuck this stupid fuck you took this you took the foot sign down got yeah, it but here's How, what i think we have the do. foot sign do you uh, have the sign? I don't own the sign. No, but does oh. he own the sign? He owns the sign. But you guys have it. No, 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 no. He gave it to this like this like hipster dude who owns a shop in Silver Lake. Okay, oh. so he is it like an sign. antique shop where we could potentially buy this? You guys are trying to buy the sign. Well, here's my plan. We take the sign, we put it up in our yard. Yeah, then Quentin, Quentin Tarantino sees wants it. to be friends. Quentin sees the sign. Is Quentin a big foot? Yes. Yeah, bro. He's he has the like foot a foot master. Scene. So this okay. is what he does. He ate some high foot. But he writes in like he did with the she poured tequila, tequila down her, her leg. Foot. Okay. Hottest scene of all time. Um, yeah. But imagine, right? You're driving up the canyon. You're coming off of whatever street we live on. But imagine you see the fucking foot sign. There's no way this motherfucker doesn't want to be our friend. Is that legal? No idea. But, okay. but we're doing it. If all we right. can cop this sign. If so we can you cop took the it sign. And sold it to a hipster. I didn't sell it. I don't own it. Okay. We, we never owned it. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So then, what's the controversy? No, people just, uh, in L it's like LA are mad because they like loved that sign. It's like very. He yeah, was like, yeah, you know what? They were they were vocal for a minute, and then everybody shut the fuck up. Cause yeah. And they I got the pizza palace from it. They ate the food, and then they were like, "All right, yeah. whatever." It's just one of those things, though. Like the foot sign was. I love the foot sign. People made. It used to be. Am I gonna have a good day or a bad day? Yeah, but happy like, foot, sad foot. I'll it's tell you if you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. It's one of those Call things me. that you liked, but you didn't really give a fuck about until yeah. they took it down and yeah. you're like, why yeah. did you do that? But I feel like you, you have such I mean? a marketing opportunity mm. here. Like you should have a sign made. Maybe it's not a foot. Maybe it's like your signature dish, whatever it is, it's a wing. It's a happy wing and then a sad wing. You guys, should, oh. you guys should draw it. You guys should oh. find some, who has oh, an artist. I like coming. the wing. I love we it. We can do a wing. The wing sign Let's is good. Let's do a wing. Happy wing, sad wing, Pija Palace. I like it. I and like then it. it's like the have a good day. Like, you know how they have have a good day and the other, the sad wing, have a bad day. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you. No, I don't think that's a bad I, idea. I think like they have 110%. I also like make you these wings that I made Chuck last week. They I look like great. You need to run a special on these wings. Oh, Szechuan you should run the wings, Eddie dog. wings for I like do, one month only. Wings. I want to. I'm I'm opening up another restaurant next oh. door that's uh, like Indo-Chinese. Are you familiar with this type of stuff? Uh, like Indo-China? The, like there's a group of Chinese people who fled to India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, then yeah, they moved yeah, to yeah. Tangra. Yeah. And like they wanted to cook Chinese food. Yeah. But there wasn't like Chinese ingredients. Yeah. So like and they I said, the it, Indian Chinese and yo, I, yeah. They used to call the Manchurian restaurants. Fucking love Manchurian, yeah. dude. They would always call it Manchurian, and I was like, this is fly, and I knew like, oh, Manchurian is probably the Indian Chinese food. That yeah. stuff's great. I love it, and I'm opening yeah. up one of those. Bro, fire! Oh. Then maybe the wings. Yo, Run the yo, wings. Yo, yeah, throw that that sauce. Crazy. If you check the last episode, it's just us taking bones. You I know, know you were I going in. You do. I watched all the episodes. <laughs> you know what I think you do on like your friends and family soft opening? You do a Chuck versus Eddie wing night. 
I no, can do we, that. No, we same team. We can't go against we same no, team. No, you're same bro. team, but like I wanna my brother. We, I we had your wings. I wanna have some chicken. Alright, cool. Wings. You know what? Alright, we do a wing off. We you do a wing off. Wing off. My wings with your sauce. Oh, oh. I don't know. I think you got to do your own wings. I'll do it. I'll do I my I've already thought I want my brother, This though. is selfish yeah. because I'm I just like, I want, like I want I want Avisha's wings. I, I also cook. Wings. I would love to be in the I wings. I would love any We should just run a tasting menu you know of wings. Yes. I like this. It's I like this. A tour of, yeah. A, yeah. around the world in 30 wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing at the new Pizza Palace. This is going to be crazy. You know what we call them? Me and my friends get together and everybody wants to, we just call them wing flights. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah, Super Bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. makes wings, oh, and you make this. a big wing flight. All right. So it's we like I'll, it. I usually, in all my friend groups, I usually I handle the buffalo. Mm -hmm. Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, the, I like the, that. The, the Rochester wing. Yeah, I do the yeah. Rochesters. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, somebody will do huh. like uh, like teriyaki with the sesame seeds. Someone will do a dry lemon pepper, mm -hmm. and then I'll do I'll do like whole wings. Somebody will do drums and flats. Somebody will do something like this. So you just do a wing flight. Because what I do notice is that when I cook for people, or if it's backyard barbecue, or if it's barbecue, you could do brisket, you could do ribs, you could do all this shit. When the wings come out, that's where all the hands are going. Yeah. Like if, if, if the homie brought a date over, right? The date and the homie, the date's plate all wings. You know, if I bring cousins or, or any all wings so i'm like you know what fuck all that other shit yeah because besides wings. ribs then i'll be having all this leftover uh red meat and all this shit that you got to kind of like turn into something mm -hmm. because people just want wings wings are yeah. just so like you put steak you even put steaks out you put steaks out and you put wings out people the are steam the off the wing is just the market employees like yeah. McDonald's sign. I don't know. I'm still eating. Actually, no. I'm eating wings over yeah, steak. Eat wings. I'm eating wings, wings over steak. Over steak. Beef the rib is my three. favorite. Uh, Beef rib is different. Go, go ahead, babe. I was just gonna say, like, if I'm at a barbecue you outside, eat this the meats. Dude, ox is great. I'm doing oh, wings. Bro, I'm fucking Unless full. there's like a pulled. Pork. I didn't know that we were gonna go full scent in yeah. this. Uh, on, I didn't know. I, the wit. Look at what he did with this. Yeah, yeah. That's good, man. Last time you still got some meat on there too. I watched the other podcast. I got. Look at man. What that mouth do? <laughs> what that mouth do? Michael Douglas. Douglas. Listen, me and Michael you don't Douglas know is running the same game. No, because you're not gonna. No, that's not gonna happen to you. No, but I eat so much <laughs> pussy. Like, I got go HPV. Like no, you don't. <laughs> Oh, this is like Pimpsey with the eye dog you poison. you HPV, then I have HPV. No, I don't no, have HPV. no, 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 because the baby can't have no HPV. I'm Damn. big chilling, but. <laughs> Now, Michael Douglas, that's my hero, man. That's kind of Lingus Hall of Fame there, bro. <laughs> Wasn't he married he to Catherine Zeta-Jones? <laughs> was Michael D Douglas married to Catherine Zeta-Jones? Yeah, he's, he was married to somebody when he met her, I believe, too. Damn. This dude yeah, she, put in, uh, she put in their prenup, though, that uh, if he cheats, he's got to, like, pay $3.5 the day of. See, yeah, that's the trick, Spencer, man. Spencer, are you watching this? Yeah, get a wife that you I don't want to cheat on. I kind of want to put that in. Okay. Get a wife you don't want to cheat on. Advice. The, honestly, for all men out there, it's just, yeah, find a wife you think is hot you don't want to cheat on. If you want to cheat on her, it's not your wife. Honestly, like yeah. that's the easiest thing. Honestly, if you yeah. got the itch to cheat, it ain't your wife. To, to be in a man that's like, okay, I've been, you know, I've been me my whole life. Yeah. I've had motion high. Yeah. I've had motion. Yeah. You know, certain men might have not had the options to all, you know, different types of women they like. But trust me, the one you like that likes you back is the best one. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to figure out how the pussy feels is a terrible sport, bro. Oh, my God. Looking at somebody being like, oh damn, I want to see what's to that. A terrible you, sport. It, oh my it's God. a terrible sport that everybody's playing. Terrible sport. Stop playing that sport. Stop playing that sport. Stop playing that sport. Stop playing that sport. You guys, it's gonna, it's find a woman that you don't want to cheat on. And that also will allow you to go to the strip club still. I feel that that's go to like the strip look, club together. I'm not. I'm He's not, only allowed to go to the strip club because we're going together, and because yeah. I used to fucking work at one. So yeah. I don't know what you're. So I mean, it's just if like because I still gotta watch, have recreational games. You gotta strip have. Club. You know what yeah. I mean? Maybe we go going together. A cake. I just hey, want to show you guys. I don't know if we're gonna eat it on camera. The man that wants to go home is the one that's seen if he still got it. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta see if you still got it. That, no, that's, okay. that's you gotta see to a happy marriage. You know what I mean? Find the woman you love that also likes to go to the strip club with you. No, yeah, completely. For sure. But you gotta, what's your strip club behavior? Mine is wings and sports. I really ain't, you know, I ain't a yeah, lap dance that's... buyer. I get in the strip club, become the mayor by the end of the. I'm in, yo, listen, if I'm going to the strip club, I'm going to the Chase Bank that Friday and I'm pulling out bricks of ones. That's how I'm going to the strip club. Also, well, shout out to Ronnie Chang for sending us <laughs> yeah. electrolytes because last time Ronnie came to the crib, 
he asked, I asked him what Ronnie wanted to drink, and Ronnie goes, do you have electrolytes? <laughs> and I had no electrolytes, so now we Ronnie, do. thank you. And also, we would like to invite you onto the show, Ronnie, please. Please. I said, okay. this is a Wow. You Thank us. you. Yo, it's Avish, that stunning. is really kind. Of course, man. You're you, a I'm a guy. guest in your house. Very kind guy. There you guys. As you a guest, you don't have to finish the oxtail if you no, don't like it. No, it's fucking delicious. Bro, I was just caught up in the conversation. He's caught it. He's caught, I, it. He's caught, I, it. He's caught I, it. I love that comment. It is a really skill. It's a skill. The more podcasts you do, you get comfortable eating oxtail in public. You know? It is. But, yo, this has been a wonderful episode. My guy, legend, return guest. Come on, man. Return guest. Number one. The first return guest. Avish, Brother. thank you so much. Thank you. Like in color. Congrats on your success. I appreciate it. All right. Go to PJ Palace. Listen to the band. Watch BET Plus. Yeah, I come to PJ Palace when I'm there. You know? Yeah. Thank you for supporting <laughs> wife when she me. worked at a strip club. Thank you. Thank you to all the old customers. Thank you so much. Love you. Yup. All right. Wonderful episode.